Welcome back to Wargamer Shut Up and Gem Guiden, where we're going to talk about the Circle of Orboros Battle Box. Circle Orboros. I always thought it was of. No. All right. Um, so it contains Tanith, the Feral Song, Yee! Gorax Rager, a Pure Blood Warp Wolf, and a Wild Argus. Yee! Also known as Argus, Pure Blood, Rager, and just godlike monster of awesomeness. Yee! So. As I'm sorry, it's, it's very difficult as a circle player to not make that noise when talking about Tana. Fair. Um, so as with our other ones, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the lights, then the heavy, then the, the caster. Okay. Um, the first thing in this box, a wild Argus. Uh, actually, surprisingly better than before. So it, it would be surprising if it had been worse than before because that would be difficult. Fair. So it is a seven-point light beast, two-headed dog monster. Um, Oceanating the countryside. Defense 14, armor 15 is not there to tank stat stuff. It's got two bite attacks at POW 12 um, that have combo strike. So, I mean, it could get up to, what, POW 16? Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, man. Uh, circular vision, which has been changed. So now that you you just never get a backstrike bonus against this model. Yeah, man. Um, which solves the problem of... Uh, yeah. Of like weird free strike bullshit. Weird free strike, yeah, nonsense. But, I mean... And now itself is Doppler Bark. Um, it's or self animus. Self-cast. Doppler Bark's good. Um, so it's range self, cost two, living or undead enemy models with currently within two inches of the spellcaster have their base defense reduced to five and cannot run, charge, make slam, or, or trample power attacks for one round. Um, so, so good. there's a couple interesting things with this one. So, uh, I mean, oh, and it's got Pathfinder as well, which is nice. Yeah. Um, it is able to solo hunt for inexpensive, like seven points is not much considering that some of the super solos are like eight, seven, six, seven, eight points. Yeah, sure. Um, that's nice. The Doppler bark is ridiculous. Super um, good. Yeah. Living or, yeah. I mean, cause the thing is you could just throw up Doppler bark and just run to within two inches. No, of, that's not how that works. Doppler bark is a pulse. It's. And it models currently within two inches. Oh. Uh-huh. You have to you have to play the game, Steve. Okay, so you gotta run there first and then and then throw up Doppler Bark. You can't do that because it's running. Well shit. What you do is you charge someone and then you're like, fucking don't move, and then you auto hit them with your POW 16 charge attack because you're fucking badass. How do you auto hit them? Because they're defense five. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean you can roll snake eyes if you're terrible. Well the thing is though is I mean to me you yeah, I mean, there, there's that. That's not bad. Like getting the the POW sixteen. That's basically that's, it. it's the longest range you can get with it. But um, what I'm more thinking is like using it to enable other mo- sure, other models yeah. to like blow but it up. But it's the nine in, like charging something is the longest you can get with it. You have to succeed at the charge. You can't fail charge. Okay, fair enough. So I mean, otherwise you're just walking up. Yeah, mm. I mean, I guess you could also like shifting stone teleport it once you're outside of battle box games. That gives you a couple of extra inches if there's nothing to charge. That's also, I mean, that, that that's, uh, would be a valid use for the, the sure. shifting zones. But I mean, that, you're not going to get more than six inch range out of that either. That's eight. Oh, is it eight? Eight okay. inch teleport. Okay. Um, I mean, there's not really a whole lot else to be said about the Wild Argus. I think it's just a really good piece now. It's fucking great. Um, in fact, because they're relatively easy to kill, um, having a second one might not even be that bad a defense. 14, uh, yeah. 14 defense isn't even that. Like, it's, it's not... So no, for 14, 14 defense, not that bad, but if but, something like hits it, it's going to start losing. Sure. But for something that's not actually doing all that much threatening on its own, like if, if they're spending time dealing with your seven point Argus, you're just laughing. Well, what I mean is that you, I mean, if you, if you really want to rely on Doppler bark, then having a second one in the army may not, may be worth it. I guess. Um, it may, I mean, maybe not, but I, I think the case could be made for it. Sure. Um, whereas before, I mean, you wouldn't want one, let alone two. Yeah. Well, so. it's, it's a huge improvement. The, the wild Argus previously known as just the Argus, uh, is I think a fantastic light. Now it does a thing yeah. that isn't like boring or easily replicated outside in the faction. I do think it's funny that before you used to get two of them, they were both worthless. Now yeah. you get one and you could also maybe use a second. One. Sure. But I mean, I think, I think it's a better idea that they gave you the Gorax in the box. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Huge. Um, so let's talk about the Gorax. Uh, primal bot. Primal, or yeah, primal bot. Pretty it's a primal bot. Pretty much all he's ever been. Um, but he's seven points, which is less. Ex- no, it's the same as the Argus. No, it's, less. I mean, it's less relative to what he was before. He was four before, so he's less than double what he was. Uh, defense 12, armor 16, two claw attacks at POW 12, so I Who mean, cares? sure. Um, he doesn't have combo strike with them, so the Argus hits harder. Well, when he's damaged, he can charge and make power attacks without being forced. Sure, but he doesn't hit harder. It's true. Um, but he's got Primal. So Primal um, yeah. is a two-cost range six uh, Animus or spell, both. If you are uh, if you are getting into Circle, Primal is your crutch. Uh, get used to it. 
Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> but it gives a target friendly living faction war beast gains plus two strength and mat for one round yes. and automatically friends is next turn. But that's a problem for after the game's over. Well, it can be a problem for after the game's over if you can use it to end the game. That's absolutely true. Otherwise, it's kind of a huge deal. Um, forcing a beast to frenzy mostly takes the beast out of the fight for the next round. Well, yeah. So if your opponent has the option, they can kill something else this turn and then kill the frenzied beast next turn because it won't have really done much. That's true. I mean, so you really want to measure when you're going to be using it. Um, yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, getting plus two, two attack or plus two mat and plus two strength basically is ridiculous. It, yeah, it's super good. Like it, it lets you take out. All, I mean, it would let the Gorax itself probably one round most Warcasters. That's true. I mean, because he'd be PAL 14, two attacks, plus Fury. Yeah, uh, and Matt 7. Uh, one thing to note is that the Gorex only has three Fury now. Uh, people, if you if you used to play Circles, Gorex used to have four Fury. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, three Fury is reasonable. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised that he used to have four, to be honest, but um, interesting. Uh, so the heavy you get in the box is, um, is interesting because it's, I don't think it's ever been in any starter box uh, before. As far as I know, it hasn't. But you get the Pure Blood Warp Wolf, so the... Uh, the Aru one. Uh, it's uh, speed six, wow. uh, defense 14, arm 17, mat six. So pretty decent. Um, it's you, got, you just you just stop before it's rat when it has a range attack. Oh, it has a rat. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. It's, it's whole deal. Whatever. Is that it's it's, it's got rat, rat five. Um, so it's range. It's got a spray 10, pal 14, um, death howler attack. Yep. Um, which I don't think it has any special rules. It's just, I, no, it's, just it's just magical. Like it's, yeah, it's he magical. has assault. Oh, okay. So uh, where? The oh, icon the, the in the icon, front of his tar- right. card that is the assault icon. I'm not used to the icons Good being nothing yet. Um, so he's got uh, four fury, high threshold of ten, which is nice. Yeah, man. And uh, as like any other warp wolf, he's got controlled warping, but he's got access to ghostly. Um, so model can advance through terrain and obstacles without penalty. Can advance through obstructions as uh, it, basically if they as if they weren't there. You, you basically get to ignore terrain. Um, he's got spell words, so he can't be targeted by spells, um, and that's situationally awesome. Uh, and he's got warp strength, so plus two strength, which is one of the things you're going to be using a lot. I mean, plus two strength brings him up to the, the very respectable PS16 in melee with his two open fists. Um, he's got regeneration, D3, which is all right. Mm-hmm. And um, his animus is uh, Wraith Bane. So he gets uh, blessed and magical weapons for... Well, target-friendly faction model. Ah, that's model. right. Target-friendly faction model. So I, actually, that brings a lot of utility. So I like yeah. that. Um, the interesting thing is, like, with him and the Gorax, you throw Primal up on... Uh, the pure blood and all this and, and you warp strength all of a sudden you're hitting at pow 18s yep. um, for your first two like your two initials then you've got four more to buy well at, unless at, you charged at, at mat eight yeah um yeah primal makes like just the pure blood can probably kill anything under primal because you're like six potentially six attacks at mat eight pow 18 yeah that's disgusting and he's got um, one inch reach now because all heavies do. Now, I mean, the, the thing about the, the Warp Wolves um, in general is they all kind of rely on the Gorex, or at least on, on the Rage Animus well, to a certain extent. Kind of everything in Circle does, so, except non-living War Beasts. So it's it's exceptionally important that you got a Gorex, at least somewhere in the collection. Yeah, less so for you, because you already have like two. Sure, yeah. But um, we only have one. Really? Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, but I think, I mean, okay, without, let, without even talking about Tanith yet... I think that the Gorax, the Wild Argus, and the Warp Wolf together in the same box is a great starting point. I think that's true. I, I mean, if you were if you were gonna go like if you didn't have any circle stuff at all, you'd probably be better served with like a Feral in the box. But a Feral is a little bit more expensive, and the Pure Blood gives you some versatility. Yeah, I mean the thing is, under certain circumstances, having access to like magical and and uh, sure and blessed weapons, sure, uh, and in a faction that doesn't normally get them, sure, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, now let's take a look at Tanith. Uh, how about I let you take this one? Uh, Tanith is awesome. She is Tanith is Bay. Thanks for watching. Yeah, <laughs> play Tanith, win all your games. GG. Um, I mean, okay, so Tanith uh, as a Circle Warlock has Pathfinder because Circle Warlocks are cool like that. Um, she's Fury Six, which doesn't really matter because she can cast all her spells and it's awesome. Um, she has Rat Six, which is important because her range attack is ridiculous. Um, her range attack has range 10, which is whatever. She speeds 6, so it's a 16-inch threat. Uh, most important thing is that it ignores cover, concealment, and elevation. So doesn't matter what you're hiding behind. As long as you hit, you center a 4-inch AoE on the model that you hit and shadow bind everything inside it. Shadow bind is a minus 3 defense penalty and prevents you from moving except to change facing. Yep. So, which is stupid as fuck. 
because I'm, the the minus three defense penalty offsets really the drawback of her, her having low focus. Um, you don't even have to hit your direct target. You just have to hit something that's close to it because it's a four inch AOE. So you can, you can like hit something that happens to be standing next to a super high defense thing and then nerf the defense of the super high defense thing and then further nerf its defense by casting affliction on it. Affliction is one of her spells. I'll get to that in a minute. Fair enough. She prowls. So she can, she gets stealth while she's in terrain and she has pathfinder. So that's awesome. Yeah. So being in terrain is not even a penalty really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the shadow bind thing is disgusting. I, I mean, well, le- within the last few months, they, they nerfed shadow bind. Yeah, sure. You can shake it. You can shake it now, but, but if, not if you're infantry. Exactly. Uh, and being able to apply it reliably in a four inch AOE means that you can use it on a bunch of infantry and it's awesome and they suck for a round. Um, and I honestly, like 90% of the time you can just use it as defense debuff to end things. Yeah. Like her spell list is disgusting. It's stupid. I don't understand how we got this. Like, I it, I love it. Yee! So, I mean, before before we get into the spell list, I think we can all just confirm that uh, Circle is the new OP faction. And Tanith is the new OP faction. That seems to be how it goes for Circle, though. You're like, here's you, we know you've had garbage for a while, so here's Brad, I guess. We, we, we never know. we never actually, like, we haven't had garbage for a long time now. It, it, well, no, but, like, historically, you know, yeah. we, we know you've had garbage for a while. Here's Emorv. Yeah. Oh, well, you, know, you, you need a trio, right? Here's Tanith. I, I guess, yeah. Uh, um, or really what's happening back at Private Your Press is five fucking circle fans are just circle jerking all over the place. No, and man. this is the product. No, man. There's one circle guy who loses to everyone all the time. So he has to keep designing himself more and more ridiculous shit. You, I, like, I, when that guy gets good at this game, you're screwed. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so, so like, realistically speaking, like, Tanith... I mean, she would be already a good super solo with just the ability to shadow bind that she has. Yeah. Obviously, she's not a full warlock with that. So you go into her spell list. She has admonition, which is gross. Um, admonition basically gets to uh, make one of your models in your battle group immune to being hit by, by melee attacks. When something advances, when an enemy model advances and ends its movement within six inches of the target model, you just move three inches and admonition expires, but you can't be targeted by free strikes. So someone charges you. Oops, I had admonition up. Bye. Yep. And unless they like based you with a chain weapon, like a chain strike, four inch reach, you're no longer being, you're no longer charged. Now the question I have about admonition, just based on the wording of it, if they, um, it says you can immediately advance up to three inches and then it says then admonition expires. So uh, it only expires if you make the three inch move. Okay. So it doesn't expire. If, like, let's say I move like a solo up there. That's correct. Um, and you elect not to. Okay. That's correct. All right. At least that's my understanding of it. Okay. Um, and so admonition basically just makes whatever model in your battle group immune to being charged by or, the first or, thing, yeah. or walked at. Yeah. I mean, again, and with pre-measuring, like you shouldn't really need to worry about being charged by multiple things. Well, the thing is she has no need to be up there anyway, but still. Well, she doesn't. I mean, unless in battle box games, she has more need to be for further forward than than usual. Well, yeah, I think anyway. I think when we play the battle box games, we're probably going to do the um, sure, whatever it's called. Sure. Um, her next spell is affliction. I don't actually know if anyone else has this. I think probably some other warlock or warcaster has this spell, but it's super good. Um, it's a two cost upkeep offensive spell that, uh, affects a model or unit, gives it a minus two defense penalty and makes everything that you hit with do at least one damage. So the question that I have though is, is affliction all that important on Tanith when she already has the shadow bind gun? Well, that depends (laughs) on what you're doing. See, um, in the Mark three transition, privateer also made Reeves of Orboros way more reliable. Mm. They have uh, range 12 and a rate of fire of two all the time, but they're only POW eights now. See, when you have, when you have a full unit of Reeves and this is something moving past the battle box level, um, but I feel like Reeves are Tannis like best friends because you throw affliction down on something, you're getting 22 shots. That's putting at least 22 damage into something. Assuming, assuming you don't miss any on the outliers, but yeah. Yeah, assuming you don't miss any against, you know, those, the minus two defense, potentially minus three more. Yeah, fair enough. So it's, it's basically your catch all for dealing with things like lights and any sort of like armored infantry. Like 
you you can wipe out an entire row of like um, Iron Fang pikemen with just the box stuff by moving your uh, uh, your pure blood up beside them mm -hmm. and then killing them all. It doesn't matter if you deal damage; you just have to hit them. Oh, I see. Like okay. affliction is, and it because it's an upkeep spell. If you play the game right and you have some, you know, some models, some some models that you'll get after the battle box and some foreknowledge, you can actually even cycle affliction. One thing I think is interesting about affliction too is um, against like let's say you're. Um, no, I guess this is from a direct hit. Okay. I was yeah. just thinking about um, about how Blast might interact with that. Yeah, no, doesn't really. Mm, okay. Um, all right, well, that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. Um, so she has another spell called Bleed. Bleed is not going to be cast that often outside of maybe Feet Turn. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple offensive spell that uh, when it damages a living enemy, enemy model, uh, she can heal. Tanith herself can heal. It's okay, but it's only a POW 10. Yeah, so you have access to Bark Nodes, though. So in the event that like she needs to, let's sure. say she's taking some range damage, she if, needs to heal. If you get to the point where Tanith needs to heal and you have a, a, a Gallows Grove uh, around and you can just cast spells through it, it's okay. And she, there is a, there is some potential for like a spell assassination with it because of her feet. But it, you're not going to cast bleed very often. It's neat when you do, if it's, you know, if it's what you need. Um, not a lot else to say about that. I don't know why she also has Rift. Uh, it, it's act, Rift is actually a spell that you will cast more often than Bleed, although perhaps not tremendously often with this with the box. Rift is a, a three inch AOE that drops. Sorry, it's a four inch AOE that drops rough terrain. Yep. Um, you don't care about that so much. Well, you do because you've got concealment. No, that or, uh, rough, prowl. rough terrain doesn't grant concealment. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you don't care about rough terrain so much because you have pathfind access to Pathfinder and Ghostly, but other people do. Even if you just drop a rift like somewhere in the general direction of in front of you, between you and the enemy, it can be really useful. It's only three focus, um, uh, three fury to cast rather, so you can still cast it on you know, and, and still upkeep all of your upkeep spells. Um, you can cast it and, you know, still cast a Scything Touch or whatever. Um, it's just, generally speaking, it's one of those utility spells that she didn't need to have but does for some reason. Because, like, Yeah, fair enough. I mean, like, the thing is, it could not, it could just not be on the card. She'd be fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You could remove, like, Rift and Bleed easily. You could probably even, like, don't get me wrong, Admonition's really good, but you could remove Admonition and she'd still be ridiculous. Because she has Scything Touch. Her last spell... Target friendly faction model gains Dark Shroud. Dark Shroud gives a minus two armor penalty to anything within that model's melee range. Um, this is going to be even better once you get out of battle box games and start getting things with reach because this hits, this is on any model. So you can get, you know, wow. a, a reach solo, a reach war beast, a gargantuan. There, you, there are shitloads of options for this. It's an upkeep spell, so yeah, of course, it can be purged by upkeep enemy upkeep removal, but you just cast it again and no one cares because it only costs two. Um, well, I think the interesting thing, too, is like you can Scything Touch your model and afflict their model, and you get you double up on the, the upkeep, sort well, of. Well, no, exactly. The thing is, like, Tanith by herself effectively gives your opponent's, like, your, mo your opponent's most important models minus five defense and minus two armor, which is stupid as fuck. Like, yep. It brings, if you talk about effective power strength, like, it brings your 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 pure blood up to a uh, fucking... POW 21 almost? No, it's POW, it's POW 18 on its own. POW 20, 20. On, uh, on, like, if it's primal. And the, the POW um, of the assault shot goes up too because it's, you know, you'll be in melee range with them to bring it up to POW 16. I mean, so so to me, like, Tanith can basically just look at one thing and delete it. Um, yeah. I don't know how, how good she is at, at killing multiple threats. Well, see, the thing is, though, she's got enough control that you don't really have to kill all of the threats. Um, if you're not concerned with defense that hard, you can throw a shadow bind on a group of infantry. You can afflict something else and send a Scything Touch Beast in to murder it. That's true. Once you get out of battle box level games, once you get a Stalker, like, Scything Touch on a Stalker is fucking ridiculous. You, you throw it on the Stalker and it's hitting at PS 18 with Berserk Attacks and then sprints away once it's killed like five heavy infantry because why not? Or fucking murdered a heavy because why not? Um, and what about her feet? Uh, her feet is like almost completely unnecessary, to be honest. Like it's cool to have. Sometimes it enables awesome plays. Could just not exist and the caster would still be batshit. Like... Um, so basically, 
when you cast a spell as Tanith um, on feet turn, you reduce the cost of the spell by one to a minimum of one. Also, you can channel through your war beasts because reasons. So you can use this to potentially run a, a, a rift, a, a bleed assassination on someone, um, pop six bleeds off or pop three bleeds with boosted attack or damage rolls. Yeah. Um, you can do this potentially like there's 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 possibilities here. Like if your opponent is running a lowish armor uh, war noun, you can run something like a Scarsfell Griffin way behind enemy lines early and then slam with it and then feet so you can channel through it. So you're hitting your knock down enemy war noun with low defense with three boosted bleeds. Well, even even better than that. I mean, just uh, run up. Well, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, now that I think about it, but you just take uh, like one of your war beasts, headbutt something. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's same deal. Like uh, problem solved. Bleed, yeah. bleed, bleed, you could up to hit them with seven bleeds even. Uh, no, six she only has six. So yeah, uh, uh, but the thing, like I, I'm saying, three bleeds with boosted damage. Yeah, it's probably more. It, it depends on what the armor value is. Like if you're if you're hitting a an eleven armor warcaster with like not enough with no focus left or only a couple points of focus, yeah, bleed it six times when it's knocked down. You're not going to miss. Well, I mean, I, I think you'd probably like afflict it first and then bleed it. No, no. Well, you, well if it's not you're afflicting for one. Sure. Oh, no, but, sorry. That's defense. Never mind. Yeah. Um, I was thinking scything touch. Yeah. I mean, scything touch only works if you, if you have your model in there and they're knocked down. So they're not engaging you or you're in their back arc, which you could do. Well, yeah, but the, the, the thing is like your model would be in there because you did knock them down with your model. Well, no, if you, if you slammed, they're not in your melee range anymore. No, no. I'm thinking headbutt. Yeah. Okay. But headbutt you have less range on. Yeah, fair. You're, we're, we're looking at different theoretical scenarios that don't really matter because they're stupid and overpowered on a, on a caster that's it's already good It's not even that move. hard, though. Like, you just walk up sure. and headbutt something. It's not that much, not that <laughs> complicated. Like, we're, this is not an advanced strategy. Sure, this but, is doing but, something everyone has access to. But the thing is, if, if, you're, if you have the ability to walk up and headbutt something, you have the ability to charge them and murder the shit out of them. Yeah, that's true. Like, you don't need Probably. to do this spell assassination. You don't need to do that. You just kill their fucking shit. Yeah, fair enough. Like, tan... I, I don't know what to say. Tanith is bonkers as fuck. So, so let's bring it all together. Tanith, I mean, we we understand she's bonkers, but uh, what do you think about her inside of the battle box in battle box level games? Um, you can basically guarantee a caster assassination on any other battle box, hmm. other than maybe the troll guy if he sees it coming and feeds. Okay, fair. it's it, it's it's just fucking stupid. Like, it's disgusting. You you have so many options to do it. It, it, I, <laughs> like, you, you, eat, okay, ignore everything on her card except the four Roots of Shadow from her main attack. You inherently have just crippled your opponent's focus efficiency. You're costing them three focus, two or three focus a turn to be able to play the game. And she seems a little, um, oppressive, to be honest. It, uh. The thing is, that's the only thing that's preventing your opponent from doing anything. Um, that's guess, the only thing I guess, I guess besides admonition too. Um, so it, it depends on the terrain. Like if there's a forest <laughs> you can do that from, they're fucked. Um, it's, she's super gross. If there's a, if there's a forest, she's OP. If there's I, not I a forest, I don't she's actually, OP. Like, I just, I, I don't understand how this caster made it. Well, and the thing is, like, it's the, the, there's no tricks to it either. It's not that hard to, to do any of that no. stuff. It's just, you just get to, it's just fine. Yeah. I mean, like, and, and like once once you get out of battle box level games, you start getting, you know, you've got your stalker makes her even better. You get gallows groves so that she doesn't have to be in any danger to cast her spells where she wants to be. Yeah. Even out of, outside of feet turn. And it like you, you know, you 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 feel like being a super giant dickhole, get a couple of units of Reeves, kill anything like you feel, feel like being a super giant dickhole, play tennis. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can play Tanith and not be a super giant dickhole. You're just not doing it right. Oh, okay, I see. Like, um, yeah, I mean, she's going to... I'm a little concerned about, like, what I have that can deal with her super effectively. I, I foresee a nerf through Errata. I don't know what it's going to be. But, like, I just... I don't understand how Tanith made it through playtesting the way she is. She, she seems very, very ridiculous. Like, I... It's, I and also, I mean, from a, a Crick starting... Uh, or, sorry, not Crick's uh, circle starting point... You get a Gorex, which you're going to need. You get a Heavy, which is nice. You get um, a, a new Warp Wolf, which is decent. A Wild Argus, which is good now. Or, yeah, Argus, sorry. Um, and then you get the Bonkers Caster. Like, this just seems like a re- like a, a no-brainer, absolute best place you could possibly start Circle. It's pretty good. I, I mean, actually, getting Tanith might 
be too much for a starting. Because <laughs> the thing is, almost any other warlock is going to be a step down. Yeah. Like, sure, there are warlocks that do things that Tanith doesn't do. Like, Morvana plays the attrition game. Kruger plays a better control game, probably. Um, Kaya runs tons of beasts better. Like, Ikaya runs a bunch of beasts better than Tanith. Tanith runs one or two beasts disgustingly well. Yeah, fair enough. And, and then just, like, you can use Reeves with her, because why not? You can use whatever with her, because why not? Hmm. Like, All right, let's open this up. See how legit this is. You know what? We didn't even... I didn't even open these to take a peek earlier. We just, like, yeah. actually kept them for this. That, that's how we uh, ended up with a mysterious box with no Warcaster in it. Yeah, well, I'm glad that we got that on film, actually. Um, for those of you that don't know, check out the Signar unboxing video. Or don't. Or don't. I mean, it doesn't have a Warcaster in it. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Anyway, so here is the Circle Battle Group. And if you've never seen any of these, one thing I really like is that the lid actually pops off and you can reuse the box. Allow me to demonstrate. Ooh. 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 All right. So inside we get the Primal Rule Book. The rules. Which uh, actually isn't available online as a free PDF. Yeah, because they put it in Prime. I mean, it's functionally the same. It is the same. Um, so if you have the PDF, you don't have to worry about having the Prime book necessarily because um, the the war or the war machine rules are in the front. The hordes rules are in this uh, appendix, um, and the converse is true in the Prime book. So um, the war machine rules are in the appendix in the Prime book. So you get them both either way. It's not a big deal. Um, however, it is nice that you get a printed book with uh, this. full rules in the starter. You get a 18 inch laminated paper ruler. Look, I said it this time. All Amen. right. Yeah, it's just as long as my penis when talking about Tanith. <sighs> All right, then. Uh, we get the Circle Orboros uh, introductory guide. And I actually want to bring some uh, some attention to this book because it comes with a short story to get you acquainted with uh, Tanith. About Tanith, yeah. Um, and then it goes into um, the stuff inside the box, which we've already discussed, but it tells you kind of how you might want to use it. And then it gives you ideas as to how to expand. Now, um, more... Don't need any of that. You won't need any of that. The reason why is because this is the first video in a series where we're going to um, grow a circle army into a full-size army, giving you suggestions in terms of incremental steps as to what you might want to pick up, why you might want to pick it up, and how to save some money doing it. Yeah. Um, but it does give you like an at-a-glance idea as to like, what they want you to buy. They being the government. Privateer presses the government. That could be war machine hordes. Um, to me, for the twenty sixteen president. Yeah, but, you know what? Be better. <laughs> um. Anyway, let's not bring politics into this. Um, the most important part of this this booklet to me is that um, they give you this. So it's a, a four, I think four pages, four or five pages of painting information on how to replicate the base colors of, of circle. So if you're a little bit intimidated by painting or you don't know how to paint uh, or you're not sure what colors to use, this actually walks you through that. Yeah, that's uh, useful for me. It tells us how to do the runes on the, the, the rock guys. Yeah, that's actually true. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we've already started doing something that isn't that, but yeah, close enough. Well, exactly. But I mean, the, the, the thing is like it, them including this, I think makes this book very valuable in terms of uh, just hanging on to it. So I wouldn't pitch this necessarily unless you're, you know, a, an accomplished painter, know what you're doing. Um, it comes with a 24 inch by 24 inch play mat. One side has uh, designated markers for letters and numbers, which will correspond to the basic training guide. And the other side is just for you to like a play mat to throw down in a, you know, battle box level game. Yeah. Basic training. This booklet uh, is actually pretty cool. So the first page gives you uh, your templates. Um, you can either lam or yeah. I guess you could laminate them and cut them out if you wanted, but um, you can either photocopy them or just cut them out, use them at, for your game. You would probably cut them out first, then laminate them, rather than laminating them. And then That's probably them. true. Um, the last page gives you basic cards for use with the, the training guide, and the 11 missions in between are to get you acquainted with the game. So if you've never played a tabletop war game or if you've never played War Machine or Hordes, this is the way to do it. This is this will walk you through there, and it'll ease you into the game nicely. Teach you the rules with lube. Exactly. And then once you're looking for the the you know the more intricacies of the game, that's where your the rules prime rule book comes in. So you get everything in this box. It's just fan freaking tastic. 
So into the into the box we go here. The dice. Black dice, white pips. Amazing. The only, only, only one, one problem is if there's a model that has Weapon Master in any of these boxes, on the charge you don't have enough dice to roll. Sure you do. I thought there was a time where you get a fifth die. There might be with specific cast. Exactly. But, um, but for the most part, four dice is perfectly fine. Um, you get tokens. So ten focus or fury tokens, three spell tokens. Um, you can write on these with a dry erase marker and they're made out of plastic. So Although you'll need a, a very light colored dry erase marker to write on those. Yeah, I guess that's the one kind of downside with these ones in particular. But the nice thing is that they're hard plastic. Um, you're going to be able to use these for a long time. They'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so it's nice that they came with that. You get your cards, which are important to play the game. Yeah, they have the stats on them. Has the stats on them, and you can mark off damage. Um, again, we recommend dry erase marker inside of a like a sleeve or something like that. Um, the final page or final card in here is actually the linear obstacle, so you can uh, bend that into a three and a half inch long wall, more Paper or less. Paper bending. Paper bending, <laughs> like air bending, but less impressive. Yep. Uh, and then we have the models, and Yee! the nice thing about this box is that all of them are packaged individually, so you cannot possibly screw this up if uh, you're building them one at a time. So let's take a look at Tanith. Tanith, the broken. Yee! I mean, if you just paid attention to our, our discussion about her, she, it's uh, the game's over. She wins. No, that's not how it works. You still have to beat your opponent savagely. Actually, we were talking about um, we were talking about things that might be difficult for her to deal with. She, and she's not unbeatable. She's just really good. Yeah. Well, and like mass stealth would, would be a way to do it. Um, lot like heavy spam might be a way to do it. But she's she's pretty able to deal with most things. So she's awesome. Uh, what else we got here? We got the uh, Argus, the wild Argus. Wild Argus. He's a good doge. So two-headed dog actually has use in this version of the game. That's fantastic. Yay. We've got our Gorax Prime, Primal Gorax. Gorax Rager. Gorax Rager. Because oh, he's angry. He goes rar rar rabble rabble. A little hard to see in this bag in particular, but uh, all in this nice green plastic, this forest green. Yes, actually, and that's a uh, that's an important thing to mention. All of the battle box stuff is colored plastic, and the reason why that is, at least cited by Private Press, is so that. Um, if you're new to the game, you build your models, you can easily identify which ones are yours without necessarily having to paint them immediately. Seems legit. Um, we still recommend you paint them because it'll look nicer, but um, it, it still recommends you paint them. You don't recommend people paint their stuff? I mean, if they feel like it. I'm not going to recommend people things that I don't do myself because I'm a lazy fuck. Fair. Um, well, I just that think, would just be hypocritical. I, th I think it just adds to the game in order to... Or it, sure, yeah. No, painted models look better. Absolutely. Um, and then we've got the uh, Warp Wolf... Howler guy. <laughs> the, the pure blood. Pure blood. There wolf. we go. I knew it was about puss sound, but I didn't know. <laughs> um, so the, anyway. The warp wolf penis. The uh, pure blood. He's all howling at the moon. Pretty sweet. Doesn't afraid of anything. Well, the, the model isn't so much howling at the moon. And, uh, and that's pretty much it for what comes in the box. So I want to ask Mike, being that you've played a fair amount of circle, how much better is this box than the Mark II version of the box? You could take everything out except Tanith and we'd be better than the Mark II box. Well, that's not entirely true. It's pretty close. No, they have anyway. Uh, it's a lot better. How, how would you how would you rate this box in terms of like a starting uh, circle player? Ten out of ten. Now, in the event that here one one important question in the event that somebody could get a hold of the Mark II two player starter set or the half of the circle half because you get the Skinwalkers, you get um, um, the two two war warp wolves, and you get the uh, the heavy in there. I think you get a heavy in there. You, you get a heavy in there. You don't. What are you talking about? Two warp wolves. You get you get an Argus and a like get a wild Argus and a winter Argus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winter Argus is garbage. You don't get the Mark III cards for any of them. Well, I mean, you wouldn't get the Mark III cards for them, but would that be, like, if you were going to start with that or this? If, if you're buying, like, half of it... And you um, get a deal on it or something like that, is it still worth picking up, or...? I would still start with this, because it gives you a Gorax and it gives you a better caster. Okay. Like, it's still worth picking up the, the, the half of the two players, the old two-player starter, for the purposes of just getting a Feral and Skinwalkers, but... Like, you can't play a game with feral, a Feral and Skinwalkers by themselves, and this will give you a better starting experience. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, pick it up. It's going to be awesome. It's I, got I, the best caster in the faction. I can't say... Uh, maybe. Like, there are things she can't do, so it depends. Like, she's probably the best at, like, killing shit. But um, <laughs> there are... 
sit. I, I can't say yet that Pikaia is dog shit in Mark Three. She looks better, but probably still not really great. Okay. Um, I mean, on the other hand, if you can get both. Why not? Yeah, well, of course, because you're still getting your value out of getting a, a heavy and a unit of medium infantry for 50 bucks or whatever. Yeah, and there's going to be a situation where you might want a second uh, Argus. Yeah, maybe. So anyway, uh, so that is our Circle Orboros uh, Battle Group unboxing. Eee. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, pimp us to your friends. You know, they don't have to pay a lot. They just got to pay a little. And uh, that's pretty much it. Post painted Tanith's. Yeah, actually, yeah, if you want to post your comments um, and ideally your painted tanits i'd love to see them um stay tuned for more come check out the connection games and comics we have the largest selection of war machine and horse miniatures in the lower mainland war machine wednesdays and sundays with tables and terrain to play your game